Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. Previously, Yuido and Nagi had made their way into the OSF force as Scarlet Guardians. They get assigned to the Seto Platoon and get familiar with Naomi and Kanase Randall of the Kyoka Platoon. In an urgent mission, Naomi is shot by the Siren and turns into another. This leaves Kanase to question the decision made by the new Hakuma as she tries to find a way to bring her sister back. The story continues with both sides of the OSF fighting against each other. Amidst this, Kanase finds it hard to collect herself. Yuido protects her and starts to think about what went wrong, and why the OSF were fighting against each other. Nagi points his blade towards him as he asks if Yuido wants to go a round or two with him, this time in a much more serious tone. Yuido asks him if he had sided with Major General Karen, to which he says he doesn't know what the Major was planning, but didn't want to betray his trust. Seto is still unable to believe that Gemma of all people would choose such a path. He asks him if that is what he had really decided, to which Gemma replies that he only wants to know the truth and nothing more. Nagi is completely taken out of reality with a dead look in his eyes. They try to tell him that Naomi was still alive, but nothing convinces him as he sincerely believes Naomi had died in battle. After this, Nagi is convinced that Yuido is his enemy as he prepares to unleash a full force hurricane. The blast almost hits Yuido and Kanase, but Seto interferes in time to deflect it and save them from a fatal injury. Seeing him, Nagi uses a spear-like attack to pierce Seto's defenses. Seto notices that his abilities had been enhanced and struggles to block the force. He turns around only to see a bunch of razor-sharp discs flying toward Yuido. Seto brings himself into the middle and gets cut while trying to save his students. He begins to walk towards Nagi as he draws his final breath, using his powers to revert him back to normal. After Seto's collapse, a portal opens up in the sky and starts to suck the majority of the OSF officers inside of it. Gemma rushes to make sure Seto doesn't get sucked in, but fails. The group later realizes that it's not just Seto who was gone, Yuido and Kanase got sucked inside as well. Inside the portal, Yuido and Kanase find themselves in a space full of red strings and patterns. They begin to see visions of Yakuma Sumeragi, and Yuido then falls deeper into the void before finding himself back with the group. He tries to reach out to Kanase, but she is not there, and even after waking up in the real world, there are no signs of those two. An injured Gemma is glad to see that Yuido had made it back in one piece. They ask him if he was still on the side of the enemy, but Gemma falls down on his knees as he admits that he might have made a grave mistake. Meanwhile, Cynet, the overall network around the city, goes down, as people lose access to the network. Yuido patches up Gemma, shocking everyone with his precise medical skills. Tsugumi is still not willing to forgive Gemma for his actions, stating how things would be different today if he had not caused the scene back there. Gemma then explains that the new Hakuma aims to build a surveillance society centered on the south. They find it to be no news, but he adds that cases of people's personalities being manipulated were being reported frequently, suspecting that OSF candidates had their minds altered. He calls this to be personality rehabilitation, an experiment by the new Hakuma to enhance the power of new recruits by extreme methods. Yuido finally understands why Nagi was acting the way he did. Gemma further adds that he was getting old, and only held up because of growth suppression. He did what he did in order to know the truth before his time in the OSF came to an end. Karen would take advantage of his desperation and tell him that Seto was involved in his experiment, making Gemma turn on his own comrades. Sinet is still down throughout the globe and reports of a bunch of other movements in the south starts to put OSF in a pinch. Karen stands on top of a burning street, vowing to get something back, whereas Kanase wakes up in a forest beside the Kunad Highway with a bunch of other OSF members. Gemma and the group don't get a moment to discuss further details as they are dispatched to fight the others that had been terrorizing the city. The computer system that controlled all of the Suo had been shut down, so they had no help from the headquarters whatsoever. Even in a situation like this, Wataro uses his telepathy to communicate with the team, letting them know that he was on his way to get the Cynet back online. He then sees a bunch of Siren soldiers in position outside the new Hakuma headquarters, realizing that they were surrounded. Before he can give more details to the team, he gets caught by a guard. In his final message, he notifies everyone that a coup is in motion. Gemma tells them that this was probably the doing of Major General Karen as they come to know that his plan was to overthrow the government itself. This meant that Josu Muragi's life was in danger, and Yuido was caught in a dilemma. Despite the apparent problems, he still has to stay on the battlefield and fight, as the whole area is being swarmed by others. Joe watches as half of his soldiers stand in agreement with Saren. His assistant urges him to use a tunnel to escape, but he refuses, thinking it to be pointless since all of OSF's secrets had been exposed to Saren. Yuido continues his fight on the battlefield, thinking about Karen and the time he had been praised by the Major General. 
he keeps remembering Nagi and his transformation as well, thinking about where it all went wrong. They are then confronted by Major General Fubuki, who is immediately hostile, asking them if they were serving under Karen's platoon. They clarify that aside from Gemma, all of them belong to Seto's platoon, and that Seto had been killed as far as they know. Gemma briefly explains his own situation to Fubuki, after which he expresses how glad he is that he is on their side as every single soldier counts. Fubuki is well aware of Karen's actions and plans to defy it to the best of his abilities. He leaves them with an immediate mission to go after the chairman and other council members, while also warning them that not all OSF members are on their side. Just after Fubuki leaves, Luca arrives at the scene joining the group, and reporting that there were no signs of Karen throughout the area. The screens around the city begin to light up as Karen is there on camera preparing for a feed. He openly declares in public that everyone who sides with New Hakuma is an ignorant fool, but he defies their government as his eyes are wide open. Karen makes a bold statement as he reveals his resolve to walk hand in hand with Saren along with a bunch of his OSF comrades. He reasons with them explaining how Sina is a network that uses the small number of psionic powers of every single individual. The computer then uses this to connect their brains together to form a pool of information, where privacy has no room at all. He believes that such a system doesn't coincide with the concept of freedom, and that they are just livestock being raised by the government, treated as if all of them were disposable at any time. While the broadcast is still going live, Yuido makes his way through, fighting a bunch of others trying to get to his father. He firmly believes that despite what the government stands for, his father is not a person who'd forsake his morality. His fight goes on as he relentlessly battles with the others, while Karen talks about a better future and the freedom that Saren offered, actively disregarding New Haikumu's existence as a system. Josu Muragi has no choice but to evacuate the place with a trusted few soldiers of his own, however while going through the tunnel the others attack him from above. As the chairman is cornered, the OSF members on the road are getting brutally destroyed by the others. Yuido hurries his way through the tunnel looking for his father, only to see Kanase standing in front of Joe's body holding a bloodied knife. In a flashback scene, we see that Kanase, who just woke up at Kunad Highway with other OSF members, makes plans to head back to Suo. Upon reaching Suo, they see that everything had been destroyed and the atmosphere is still covered in a reddish hue. After heading underground, Kanase finds the same ampule that was lying around the place where Naomi got shot. General Karen blindsides the group and gets his hands on Kanase as if he was expecting their arrival. He copies her power using his brain eater ability and flees the scene right away. They get confused over why he would steal her powers since he has always been able to perform psychokinesis. Outside, they are met by a stranger wearing a ronin hat. He recognizes the OSF members as psionics and goes right after them. Kanase notices the Bakai figure around his waist and asks him if he was Yuido Sumeragi. The stranger responds in a positive tone, calling out her name as if he knew who she was. He also recognizes the voice of Kyoko Eden and Shiden Ritter who are fairly confused to see him there. They also find out that seeing how he was only responding to their voices, Yuido Sumeragi has lost his vision. Kyoka Platoon quickly finds out what was happening as they point out that they were not in Suo 2020. Yuido from the future then tells them that she is right, and that they are currently in Suo of 2070. Soon after, everyone apart from Kanase disappears as Yuido explains that only those with the gifted powers of time travel are able to persist in a world foreign to their own time. He then explains that Kanase's powers are not psychokinesis, but gravikinesis, and she has the dormant ability to manipulate dimensions. In short, Kanase is able to time travel, and the red strings are hers to control. Yuido briefs her about the events following the revolt where New Hakuma lost most of their credibility and resorted to him as a mainstream hero of the nation. Joe gets killed shortly after and the authorities hunted Kanase as the culprit. She claims that she did not and would not do something like that, but he doesn't respond and continues with his brief. Yuido would spend the rest of his time as an OSF officer fighting others and Seirin revolters, while at the same time the quasi black hole that they created grew in size. He explains that he too has the power of time travel and controls the red strings. His own powers resonated with hers which created the Kunad Gate, which is the same portal that had sucked a bunch of OSF officers earlier. In 2070, the gate has grown so massive that it threatens to devour the entire world, and each time he uses his powers to fight, the gate grows stronger and more stable. The only way to stop it is for him to die, but he chose not to do so mostly because it was too late for him to do that. 
As a last plea, he asks her to return back to 2020, 50 years back in time, and kill his younger self before he can power the Kunad Gate further. He also tells her that Suo conducted research under the government to turn humans into others. Yuiro then takes his final stand as a bunch of others begin to appear and slaughter him, as Kanase watches in horror, his only wish being that she went back in time and killed him. She then returns back to her time at Kunad Bridge and comes in contact with some of the Kyoka Platoon members. Kanase hurries her way through the same tunnel and finds an injured Joe on the verge of his death. Before he dies, she asks him if Naomi's incident was under the government's watch, and his silence serves as a definitive answer for her. She shows him mercy by making his death quick, stabbing him with a knife, which is exactly when Yuido sees her. She dashes to stab him on sight, but Yuido blocks her and starts to ask what she was doing. Gemma and the others join him, after which someone whispers in Kanase's ears and she flees. Yuido goes to his dying father, who in his final breath tells him to be wary of this nation. Outside the tunnel, Kanase meets Kagero, the same person who helped her out before things got out of hand. His claims are suspicious, but Kanase forgets to take notice as things are too heavy on her side. She regroups with Kyoka and her platoon along with Kagero. Kanase briefs them about everything she experienced when the time shifted, which all of them find hard to believe. They do swallow the hard pill and take her word, but are still disappointed over the fact that she was really trying to kill Yuido back there. Yuido is recollecting his thoughts about the disaster around him when Gemma and Tsugumi report to the group about Kanase's movement and that Karen was spotted with her. The Sinet then comes back online as Kato calls Yuido to the headquarters, urging him to be a hero. Thanks for watching part 2, all other parts will be in a pinned comment below.